Electrical Charge. So there's many uh, special effects that have a basis in uh, electrical phenomena. Uh, the Force in uh, Star Wars is one example that immediately comes to mind. So uh, electrical uh, phenomena uh, have to do with uh, electrical charge, that's the foundation, and there are in nature two types of charges. There's positive charge and negative charge. And the distinction is that uh, positive charges repel positive charges but attract negative charges. And likewise, negative charges repel negative charges and they attract uh, positive charges. So we say light charges repel, opposite charges attract. Now, the fundamental origin of these charges are that the particles that make up uh, atoms have charges. There's the uh, electrons, which have negative charge, and the protons in the nucleus that have positive charge. And uh, the electrons are often loosely bound to the atoms, and so uh, they can uh, move around. Now, uh, objects uh, normally have an equal number of uh, electrons as protons in their atoms, and so uh, in general things are neutral, uh, but it's possible to uh, accumulate excess electrons or to strip away electrons. Uh, one of the easiest, simplest uh, ways of achieving this is that since electrons move easily, uh, they can just by uh, frictional rubbing uh, be transferred from one object to another. So when you brush your hair with a plastic comb or walk across a carpet with plastic shoes, uh, you may notice some electrical charge that develops. Uh, this um, uh, gathering charge by uh, frictional contact is called uh, the triboelectric electric effect. Now uh, let's look at a little demonstration of, um, so I have a rubber rod, I rub it with some fur and then I'm going to detect the charge by dumping the charge that I just put on the rod on that electroscope. Now I touch it and I uh, have now discharged it. So as I said, we um, uh, the charged rubber rod uh, deposits a negative charge in the form of electrons into the electroscope. So the legs of the electro electroscope, uh, because the metal top is connected to these metal um, legs, uh, everything metal there becomes uh, charged, and because the uh, everything has the light charges, uh, they repel and the legs separate. Now, when I uh, touch the electroscope, uh, those uh, electrons are trying to get away from uh, one another, and so they uh, easily escape into my uh, body, and now the electroscope basically becomes neutral again, and the legs come back down. Now, we can develop uh, much higher amounts of charge by using devices like a Van de Graaff uh, generator. So uh, let's um, see an example of this. This is a half million volt um, Van de Graaff. You can see the sparks coming off of it. So very large amount of um, charge. Now those, um, even though the voltage is, is quite high uh, and it's somewhat painful if those uh, sparks hit my hand, it's uh, not as dangerous as you might, uh, might imagine. Uh, here's a demonstration similar to the um, charging of the electroscope. Here we have a mannequin and as the Van de Graaff transfers a charge, uh, the individual hairs become charged and because everything has the same charge, uh, all of them uh, repel each other and so they try to get as far apart as they can. Uh, so 
just like the legs of the electroscope separated, we see uh, the hairs um, separate. You can also do this with a real person uh, touching uh, the Van de Graaff generator. Uh, their, their hair will also uh, go up like this. Uh, sometimes a, an unpleasant shock uh, when you have to discharge them, but uh, other than that, it uh, works just fine. Let's see, I'm uh, taking away some of the charge, which drops the hair momentarily. A uh, similar demonstration of repulsion here with um, some metal plates. As each metal plate becomes charged, it uh, has enough repulsion to uh, fly up into the air. Uh, another similar demonstration with uh, some Rice Krispies. Maybe Rice Krispies is like six years old. <laughs> yeah. Like, Maybe they're stale. Yeah, I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they still seem good. Crispy. Crispy enough. I mean, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that okay? Too crispy. All right. Let's roll. So, again, another example of charged objects repelling when they all have the same uh, charge. Now, uh, as I mentioned, the um, Van de Graaff we're using there uh, can reach uh, half a million volts, and while that may seem uh, dangerous, it's uh, not really because electric potential uh, doesn't indicate the total amount of energy, it indicates the amount of energy per charge. and so. Uh, there isn't a uh, very large amount of total charge uh, that uh, is on the is on the Van de Graaff. So, uh, much like uh, temperature indicates energy per molecule, electric potential indicates the energy per charge. Uh, so you can catch uh, 5,000 degree Fahrenheit uh, sparks from a sparkler. In your hand, and just because they're uh, tiny, you uh, are not receiving uh, that much energy. Same thing with the Van de Graaff, just a single spark from it doesn't carry as much energy. So they're uh, safe because the total amount of energy is small. Uh, we'll see more about this uh, when we look at electric current, uh, then with electric current, uh, even a much lower voltage uh, could be dangerous because the total amount of energy uh, could be much larger. So in uh, summary, uh, atomic particles, the protons and electrons, have positive and negative electrical charges. Uh, light charges repel while opposites attract. Uh, in general, objects have equal positive and negative charge, so usually um, typical objects are neutral, uh, but since electrons move easily, uh, objects can become charged by frictional contact, like the rubbing the fur on the rubber rod. The Van de Graaff generator uh, produces significantly more charge at a very high potential, and that uh, electrical potential uh, in volts indicates the energy per charge, similar to temperature, which indicates energy per molecule. So this is just the foundation of electrical phenomena. We'll look at many more properties in the next few tutorials.